Hello everyone and welcome to the Perio Hub. I am Dr. Sneha and today we are going to discuss about the basics of periodontal microbiology. Let's get started. Now we can observe microorganisms in different places. It can be dispersed in the air, it can be observed in the drinking glass of water, it can be also associated with plants, the land, the soil and obviously it is associated with the human beings. Now if we talk about the oral cavity then it harbors millions of microorganisms but to be precise we can put it under five major categories. So the first category involves the hard surfaces like the tooth, the rest restorations, the implant surfaces. The second surface is the tonsil and the tonsillar areas. The third surface is the dorsum of the tongue. The fourth surface mainly involves the epithelial surfaces like the palatal epithelium, the buccal epithelium and the floor of the mouth and ultimately the fifth area and one of the most important areas where the microorganism harbors itself is the gingival sulcus which can further form the periodontal pocket. Now the microorganisms which are associated with the periodontal pocket are basically the periopathogens. Now if we talk about uh, the quantity of microorganisms, the maximum quantity is seen associated with our gut uh, whereas the second highest microorganisms are seen in the oral cavity. If we talk specifically about bacteria, there are about 700 species of bacteria that are associated with the oral cavity. So microorganisms are extremely tiny species and magnification plays a very important role to observe these microorganisms. To have a basic idea the size range of these uh, organisms ranges from 0.2 mu m to approximately 200 mu m. Now mu m means micrometer or 10 to the power of 6 micrometers equals 1 meter. So this equation basically gives us an idea about how small a micrometer can be and the size range of these microorganisms fall in these micrometers. Now microorganisms can be broadly classified into categories such as bacteria, viruses, protozoa, fungi and algae species. Now the king of microorganisms is always the bacteria and it is always seen in higher proportions as compared to the other microorganisms. So let's discuss a little bit about bacteria and its structure. So to start off this is a cross section of the bacterial cell uh, and it mainly consists of an outer capsule and, it is, and this capsule is also termed as the slime layer. Underneath this outer capsule, we have the cell wall and the plasma membrane also called as the cell membrane. Beneath the cell membrane, we have the cytoplasm and uh, the cytoplasm harbors free floating ribosomes. Now a very peculiar aspect is the presence of the DNA and this DNA is not present in a nucleus. Now if we consider a normal human cell, it consists of a cell membrane followed by the presence of a nucleus inside which the DNA is present but such a case is not seen in case of bacteria. Here the DNA is present directly uh, in the cytoplasm and it is coiled in nature whereas in humans the DNA is linear in nature. So this type of cell is termed as a prokaryotic cell whereas the cell which consists of a well formed nucleus along with condensed DNA is termed as a eukaryotic cell. So remember we are eukaryotic and the bacteria are prokaryotes in nature. Now another very important uh, aspect of bacteria is the presence of the bacterial flagellum also called as the flagella. So this organelle is basically important for bacterial motility or bacterial movement. Now apart from that we have tiny projections which are also seen and these are termed as the pili. It helps in attachment of the bacteria onto the surface. So now that we have a broad idea about the structure of the bacteria, let's see how bacteria can be classified. So first let's classify bacteria based upon the shape. 
So we have many types of bacteria with different shapes. The first type we are going to talk about is the cocci. Uh, so these are spherical bacteria which are seen or round bacteria. So here we see something called as diplococci that is two spheres together. Streptococci is a linear arrangement of cocci cells. And staphylococci are cocci cells which come together in a bunch or in an irregular arrangement. Now the second type of shape is the bacilli or the rod shape. So here we see a diplobacilli that is two rod shaped bacillus which are uh, seen attached to each other. Streptobacilli are again a chain of bacilli cells uh, adhering to each other. And one more interesting uh, shape is the cocobacillus wherein uh, it is basically a bacillus or a small rod shaped bacteria but it is so small that it starts resembling a cocci. So it has resemblance of both cocci and bacillus and that is why the term cocobacillus is given. Now other shapes include uh, the spiral shaped bacteria, the vibrio bacteria etc. Now based upon the cell wall characteristics the bacteria can be classified into gram positive bacteria. So in gram positive you have a layer of peptidoglycan so there is a thick layer of peptidoglycan in gram positive bacteria whereas in gram negative the peptidoglycan layer is quite thin so as you can see this reddish la uh, peptidoglycan layer is quite thin in gram negative which is further covered by a outer layer of lipopolysaccharides and proteins so lipids and proteins are covering the peptidoglycan layer in gram negative bacteria now how exactly did the term gram positive and negative come into picture so this basically came through something called as gram staining so we all must have done this uh, experiment in our UG days wherein uh, we take the bacteria and we fix it with crystal violet which is nothing but a primary stain. Now both gram positive and gram negative bacteria will take up this crystal violet stain. Now the second step is to treat it with iodine solution such that a crystal violet iodine complex is formed and this complex prevents the dye from getting removed or leaking out very easily. The third step is to add a decolorizing agent. This is nothing but a combination of ethanol and acetone. And once this is added, in case of the gram negative bacteria, the ethanol and acetone will wash away the lipid layer. So as you can see here, the lipid layer is washed away. And along with that, the primary stain of crystal violet is also washed away in case of gram negative bacteria. The last step is to add a secondary stain also called as a counter stain which is saffron and will stain the gram negative bacteria. So as you can see in the end result uh, the gram positive has a darker stain of crystal violet that is violet or bluish in color whereas the gram negative has the counter stain which is of saffron which is pinkish in color. So this is how based upon the composition of the cell wall uh, the bacteria can be classified into gram positive and gram negative. Now the third way in which we can classify bacteria is based upon the respiration. So as we all know mitochondria is the cell organelle which helps to carry out respiration in case of a eukaryotic cell but in case of prokaryotic cell which is the bacteria this function is carried out by mesosomes. Now inside the mesosomes there are two types of respiration that can occur. The first type is termed as the aerobic respiration which requires oxygen. So as you can see here the glucose in the presence of oxygen uh, is broken down into carbon dioxide, water and energy. So there is release of energy in the form of ATP and this uh, energy is utilized by the cells. Now there is a second type of respiration that can occur which is termed as the anaerobic respiration. Here uh, the glucose is broken down in, in the absence of oxygen into lactic acid and there is release of energy. So in both the processes there is release of the energy which is then utilized by the bacteria but in aerobic respiration bacteria requires oxygen for survival whereas in anaerobic respiration bacteria does not require oxygen for survival. So here we see an experimental study wherein in the first case we see something called as the obligate aerobes. So obligate aerobes are bacterial species which require oxygen for survival. 
so uh, so that is the reason they accumulate right at the top of the test tube where there is enough oxygen which is available now the second type is termed as the obligate anaerobes these are bang opposite to the obligate aerobes they respire in the absence of oxygen in fact they are poisoned by oxygen so they are seen to accumulate right at the bottom of the test tube now the third category are the facultative anaerobes so here the bacteria can grow both in the presence as well as in the absence of oxygen so that is the reason they are seen dispersed throughout the test tube but if we observe closely there is more concentration of bacteria seen right at the top and this happens because aerobic respiration generates more amount of atp as compared to the anaerobic respiration so facultative anaerobes will prefer aerobic respiration when possible but they can always survive in anaerobic conditions as well now the fourth category are termed as the aerotolerant anaerobes now aerotolerant anaerobes are again anaerobic microorganisms but they are not like obligate anaerobes so they will not die in presence of oxygen they can tolerate it to some extent and that is the reason they are equally distributed throughout the test tube coming on to the fifth category which is the micro aerophiles now these bacteria need oxygen and cannot really thrive in anaerobic conditions but very high concentration of o2 is poisonous for these organisms so as you can see they are present somewhere on the upper part of the test tube but they are not seen right at the top because heavy concentration of oxygen is poisonous to the micro aerophiles so let's quickly take examples of three very important periopathogens firstly we have the porphyromonas gingivalis it's also called as the pg now this organism is a gram negative organism so it will take up the counter stain of uh, saffron it is anaerobic in nature and it is rod shape or it is bacilli Uh, in nature next bacteria which is agregatibacter actinomycetes comitans it's also called as the aa this particular uh, bacteria is again gram negative in nature but here this bacteria is a facultative anaerobe that means uh, it thrives in both aerobic as well as anaerobic conditions but it will always prefer a aerobic condition to obtain more energy and if we talk about the shape it is a coco bacilli so remember we spoke about the coco bacilli category wherein the bacilli or the rods are so small and tiny it almost starts resembling a cocci cell so this is the tenerella forsythia it was previously also called as bacterioid forsythis uh, and this bacteria is very similar to p gingivalis again it is a gram negative rod shaped bacteria and it is anaerobic in nature so with this we come to an end of the basics of periodontal microbiology and i hope this forms a good base to understand the next uh, video where we'll be specifically talking about the microorganisms associated with the periodontal disease so today we mainly spoke about the structure of the bacteria and how exactly uh, can we classify bacteria based upon its shape and the different types of the cell wall and based upon the type of respiration so i hope this video helped to strengthen the basic knowledge about uh, microorganisms and if you like this video please hit the like button subscribe to this channel and also do let us know in the comment section below i'll be meeting you back very soon with my next video until we meet next take good care of yourself this is perio hub signing off